Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Valerie. And we are on the gazebo of the campus of Meridian uh, this week, touching base with you to see how things are going. So I've been um, out a couple of weeks. So how, um, how has it been, Mallory? How are things? It's been really good. Things are great. Um, I'm actually really glad you're back because I have a question. I, I okay. have something I want to talk to you about. Okay. Um, so a few weeks ago, we talked about this concept of um, our thoughts affecting our feelings and our behaviors. Yes. And, you know, it's the thought itself rather than like the thing that has happened that, yeah. that really affects like our emotions, our reactions mm -hmm. and, um, and all of those things. So if our thoughts affect our feelings mm -hmm. and our behaviors, how do we know if a thought needs to be changed or like, what does that look like? Changing, actively changing our thoughts to affect our, our feelings and, and behaviors in a more positive way. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Cause I think it's one of those things that is so easy to say and even like understand the concept like, oh yeah, if I just change, change the way I thoughts. think, yeah. everything will be fine. Um, but like, how do you actually do that? That's yeah. to put that into practice is difficult. Or, and I love what you said, how do you even recognize if it's a thought that needs to be changed, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think uh, there's a couple of things. One is to remember to be, to be selfish, right? So this is about when you wanna feel better. So maybe I don't, I don't wanna be angry and I don't wanna do that thing I did because I'm angry. So mm -hmm. that might be time to look at the thought that created that. Um, and then maybe that's a thought that needs to be changed. Or I don't wanna be afraid um, and I don't want to do the actions that go along with my fear. Mm -hmm. So let me look at the thoughts that I have that are causing the fear and, and actively change those, right? Yeah. So I think that's the indicator piece. Um, but uh, luckily there, there's actually a little bit of science behind some ways to reframe those thoughts. Mm. Um, and one of the thing is, is that there's six common thinking traps that people mm. fall into. And there's some indicators. So if we see um, any indicators of these thinking traps in the thoughts we've taken a closer look at, mm -hmm. um, there's some ways that we can try to change those. So um, the first uh, one is jumping to conclusions. Mm. So that's where we make a causation or like we decide that something caused something or we decide that, that two things are connected without really having any evidence. So if I text my friend and they don't text me back, it doesn't necessarily mean they're mad at me. Like this is happening right. all the time. Like yes. I, I jump to the conclusion like, oh my gosh, something's wrong. Like I said something wrong or they must be mad right. at me. Right. So you start connecting dots yeah. that aren't there, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you've got a dot that is there, right? Mm -hmm. um, or maybe even there's two dots that are there, but they're not connected, right? But yeah. that's what the jumping to conclusion looks like is when we're just sort of making all of these connections um, or making all of this causation uh, mm -hmm. that we don't really have the evidence for. Um, so if we're feeling a negative feeling and having a negative consequence and we look at the thought and we go, ooh, you know, that looks a little bit like jumping to conclusions, um, that's, the, that's thinking trap number one, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that we can fix that and try to reframe that thought is to uh, ask ourselves, sort of challenge ourselves to produce the evidence, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, so, so-and-so didn't text me back. I've jumped to the conclusion that she's angry with me. Mm -hmm. What evidence do I really have that she would be angry with me? Absolutely none. Right, so okay. then maybe we need to say, you know, well, well let me ask you, like, how would you change, what, what's a thought you could change that to? She didn't text you back. You discovered the thinking trap of jumping to conclusions. Mm -hmm. Now you wanna change the thought. What's a thought that you could? Maybe she's busy. Yeah. Maybe she hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, like, yeah. maybe she's busy, maybe she hasn't seen it yet, maybe she saw it, but she got a phone call right after. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, maybe she is upset with you about something, but you don't know if any of those things are true. Mm -hmm. uh, all you know is she has not texted you back yet. Yeah. Right. So we gotta kind of deal with what we know. Um, and then you could see how your emotions mm -hmm. um, would be different mm -hmm. um, depending on introducing different thoughts and then your corresponding actions would be different as well. Yeah. So um, the another thinking trap the second one um, that sort of goes hand in hand, there's some overlap here, is mind reading. And this is both assuming you know what someone else is thinking and feeling, but here's the kicker. It's also assuming that other people know how you're thinking and feeling. <laughs> so can you think of any examples of that one? I feel like, I, I don't think I'm alone in this, but like if you, here, let me think about this. If I've had moments where um, I, f 
I was upset with my husband, right? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Where I was upset, but like, I didn't say anything, but Because he, he should know. know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, he should have known that that's how I was feeling. Right. Even though I didn't, exa I just didn't say anything. Right? right. Yes. No, that is a perfect Why example. I <laughs> and I think it's so common. And I think you are far from alone in that, right? Especially if, um, you know, your spouse, God forbid, asks you, why are you upset? You know, like, what, how do you not know why I'm upset, right? So, so that is a great example of mind reading. In that scenario, we've assumed that the other person can read our mind, right? Yeah. That the other person knows how we're thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, it's a twofold, you know, because sometimes we assume how they are thinking and feeling, and sometimes we assume that they know how we are thinking and feeling. So when we've looked at a thought, we have a, a negative emotion, we have a, a bad reaction, and we look at the thought and we go, oh, maybe that was mine reading right mm -hmm. so the way that we can sort of reframe that thought is to ask ourselves two critical questions and one mm -hmm. is have I if, if we're assuming we know how someone else is thinking and feeling um, did I ask specific enough questions mm -hmm. you know and that's very similar to jumping to conclusions with gathering evidence right so we want to ask very specific questions about how the person is feeling and what they are thinking mm -hmm. so that we have accurate information if it's the other one, like the example that you gave, the critical question that we have to challenge ourselves with is, have I been clear enough? Mm. You know, have I really given this person enough information so that they know how I am thinking and feeling? And sometimes we have to own a little bit of that and say, you know, maybe I didn't, um, or maybe I did, but it was a really long time ago and in a different context, mm -hmm. you know? So in this situation here and now, have I given enough information? Um, and then you can see, again, how our emotions um, would be different, you know, and not necessarily going from like super negative to super positive, but maybe somewhere in between, like maybe I'm slightly annoyed instead of enraged, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> and my consequences, my reactions to being annoyed are different than my reactions to being um, enraged. And right. so it's a step in the right direction to feel better. Um, yeah. So, so that's the first two um, of the six, you know, common thinking traps. So there's six, so maybe we spend the next few weeks talking about the other ones. I have some, I, I know of a few other ones that maybe I'll touch on next week. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. I think this would benefit yeah. everybody. So we'll plan on doing your two next week. How's that yeah, sound? Yeah, that awesome. sounds great. See if you guys um, notice any of the thinking traps that we talked about today. Um, you know, let us know if you, you've worked on them and it, if that worked, if your feelings were different. Um, and then just know if you need some extra help that Meridian is by your side. We are open for services and you can always give us a call at 352-374-5660. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.